Look at me, that's me in the bruh. Wait, no, that's real me. And I'm watching real me in the reflection in the window. Boy, is that tripping you out? Do you even know who's where? Where am I? Am I in the window? Am I in front of the window? What's what? <laughs> <laughs> you know, believe it or not, you guys, I still, at this point, all these YouTube videos are filmed with my iPhone. I've got a little GoPro I started using a little bit. And of course the drone, I'm getting better at. It's kind of it's fun, I like that kind of thing. But good old iPhone, whoo! Oh man, I'm getting ready to go out on another trip. And I can't say is that I'm quite ready to go. Now I don't mean that in the way that I'm not ready. I'm ready. My truck is ready, sporting a new look. Yeah, see that? This actually is gonna be my last round in who I call Charlie Brown. We named this truck Charlie Brown a long time ago. Don't ask me why, it just fit and that's just what it became. Went ahead and took the uh, took the bird banger off the top. Doing that to be try to become a little more fuel efficient. This hopper trailer deal for that truck specifically is becoming more of a, uh, a regular thing to where the bulk of what that truck's gonna do is gonna be pulling that hopper. I was running into a few spots. Remember that video a little while back where I where I couldn't fit underneath the, the door in that scale house? Anyway, I'm running into that a little bit here and there and it's just extra, it's made to deflect wind from tall trailers, but that grain trailer's not tall. This is my last roll in Charlie Brown. Um, kind of a fun little turn of events. Good for this guy, good for me. One of those symbiotic relationships. You guys remember Cody? Uh, that uh, ran with me last fall when we went out and got that uh, that donated rescue hay. Cody, who uh, did that with me in the Big Green Kenworth, he has kind of got some things at home where he got situated with his little ranch and his cow herd to where he is ready to transition into um, a little bit, I don't want to say slower, but maybe slower, yeah, maybe a little slower um, uh, of a trucking deal. So he sold his truck He's got himself in a really great financial position to be debt free and own his cows and uh, has decided that he wants to come to work for me, which we've been working together for years. We're great friends. Um, so he's uh, he's gonna come drive this truck kind of as it fits his schedule with his ranch. That way he doesn't have the overhead to deal with with having a semi, um, the insurance, all the costs that are you know involved with just having a semi, whether you use it or not. So he's gonna come and take over Charlie Brown. This will be his his setup. Kind of polished her up, changed her look a little bit. He's gonna take over here in a couple weeks with that truck. And that has me uh, in a cab over or uh, in that T660 once we get it uh, up and raring here. I'm getting sidetracked. Schedule's been kind of crazy. Um, I always say that, but I mean it. <laughs> Schedule's been a little crazy, but uh, this is my last chance to go out on the road for a little bit. So the way I've kind of been working this is I'm, I've been out for the same amount of time as I've been home. Some of you have asked about that. Um, I'll go out for three weeks and then I come home for three weeks or out for two weeks, home for an equal amount of time. And uh, on the ranch, see, fingers crossed, it's still very dry. I mean, it looks beautiful, right? It's green, but it's very... It's just, it's almost a facade. It, it's great, we've got pretty good surface moisture about that far down, but that's it. A um, Couple hot weeks with no rain and all this is gonna suck and dry out. Still hoping for that big old soaker. We've had very timely and we've been very blessed to have some timely rains to get this grass growing, but looking for that big, you know, settle in for three or four days and drop about three or four inches of rain on us to really fill the reservoirs grass is green but all the reservoirs the livestock ponds you know the little streams and creeks and and uh, things that typically run in the springtime are not they're the reservoirs are dry and the little creeks are not i know creek creek they're not they're not uh they're not running so we're still hoping for that but take one thing at a time assuming we get some moisture uh by the middle of june it's time to start getting the haying equipment ready 
uh, getting those things to go because we start cutting hay anywhere depending on the weather from the middle of June to early July on through the month and uh, that that little season's sneaking right up on us you guys so anyway the point of telling you that is this is my last little two week two and a half week stint to get out on the road because once I get back between playing music most weekends through uh, through June and July and haying season I'll be home for like six weeks which is great we look forward to that I'll be home Cody will take uh, take Charlie Brown out on the road until he has to start cutting his own hay and uh, we'll bring the T660 into the shop and we'll overhaul that thing and hopefully by the time the end of July rolls around we get all the haying done the thick of the music is played through um, it'll be time to take the T660 out on a maiden voyage with a fresh engine I also need to pick up another hopper trailer. I've, uh, I've sold down a couple of my cow trailers because the cow flow is a little weird with this drought. So I've downsized my cow trailer fleet and uh, I need to replace that a little bit. Of course, for, um, for financial reasons, you can't really sit on, when you sell things, you can't really sit on that money. Um, you need to keep it moving and reinvest it. Otherwise you get yourself in a pretty serious tax liability at the end of the year. They'll go, oh, hey, Remember them trailers you sold and didn't replace? It's time to pay up, son. <laughs> so anyway, I gotta get another hopper that we can put behind the T660, put it behind the cab over for a little while. I would love you guys nothing more than to just take the cab over and just run and roll for a while. But this $5.50 diesel, oh, it's really impact. I shouldn't even be letting my truck warm up. <laughs> I've burned a gallon of diesel letting it warm up this morning. Anyway. That should fill you in on everything. Uh, got some got some big loads lined up. Got my bags packed. You guys enjoyed the last trucking video. We'll try to get you a little more footage from the highways. We're literally doing right out the gate, a coast to coast. <laughs> Not Yeah, I'm gonna call it coast to coast because it's from a state that touches the ocean and it's going to another state that touches the ocean. First time for me that I've done a true coast to coast. So let's ride. Oh, what a deal, what a deal. Hey guys, it's Jax. And I've got a problem. Things first. That looks so tidy. You guys liking that? I'm really liking that it just looks clean and efficient and streamlined. Beautiful. Anyway, first things first. We gotta get some supplies. See, coast to coast runs. You guys ever wonder why they call it big sky country? Montana, look at that, it looks fake. It looks like something painted above my head. Could be that I'm on a green screen right now. You just never know. Could be green screen in it, but I'm not. You gotta stop, I'm gonna stop here at the old Walmart and uh, get stocked up. Cause when you're doing a coast to coast, you wanna do it right. <sighs> no stops for nothing but fuel. That means I gotta get supplies. Gotta get supplies. Don't laugh at my supplies. They are my own. on top of the old Rogers Pass in Montana and I wanted to stop smell just a little something rubbery and you never know when you're climbing up these hills it's usually somebody else or something but I want to check because I did a little work here when I was home So, you saw those, uh, there we go, all this hair, all this freshly washed hair. <laughs> 
enjoy it while you can. <laughs> you saw where I had that uh, fire hose kind of wrapped around my heater hoses. You gotta remember this was an engine conversion. So you look at that and you're probably like, wow, that's kind of trashy looking. <laughs> but this was an engine conversion and there's just no good way to get the heater hoses from where they uh, come out of the heater core in the cab down into the to the engine basically to, to circulate into the exchanger there. Um, so those hoses have never been great. I've never liked the way that they sat. They've always kind of rubbed on something. They've just been a little loose. So over the course of the year, I've been trying to kind of, you know, shape them up and I've rerouted them to kind of rest up on top of the, uh, the air compressor, not, sorry, not the air compressor, but the compressor wheel that comes off the turbo to run the charge air. Anyway, and so when I smelt something there a little bit, I thought, I wonder if that fire hose came loose and is melting on the turbo or something a little bit, but it wasn't, everything was clean and clear. Nice and toasty, but no, uh, nothing to worry about. So, but man, anytime you ever smell something, just a little word of the wise, you ever smell something, don't be afraid to just stop and check it out. It's usually not you, it's usually a passing car or something, but sometimes it is you. Sometimes you do smell. <laughs> like me when I don't shower. Anyway, we're coming down the Rogers Pass. Down the old Roger Dodger. Uh, Rogers Pass comes down off the mountain here and goes down into the little town of Lincoln, Montana, which was where the Unabomber was holed up all those years when he was mailing those uh, those bombs in the mail. In a little cabin out here in Lincoln, Montana. Check out some of the scenery. Guys, it's time to fuel up and I'm not real excited I've actually done real well you using fuel discount deals I use the mud flap app which is a kind of a it's a fuel discount for truckers anyways I have not had to really pay over five dollars a gallon yet I've just lucked out here and there once or twice on my last round I had to just put a few gallons in to get me to a, a cheaper place but I've been home for a couple weeks and I'm back out. It is 5.49 a gallon. Oh, this is gonna get ugly. Oh, I can't even complain. It wasn't even a thousand bucks. I feel like I got off easy. <laughs> That's more or less you guys uh, driving this truck hard, if you drive hard. That is basically your daily cost to run this thing for fuel. A little less than that, but uh, you're rolling and going. There you are.
reporting from Washington. Oh man, you guys, you know I'm always talking in my, <coughs> or at least in my last road video about, you never know where you're going and you talk to one person and they say go here. I'm, at, I'm loading at Legacy Fruit, loading apples, organic juicing apples to go to uh, Virginia. And man, talk about a place where you don't know what's what. <laughs> I'm just wandering around like a lost boy until I finally found a nice lady to help me here. Oh, let's open this tarp up. I'm parked on the road. Not where I'm supposed to be. No signs, no nothing. Anyway. All right. I think I've got marching orders now. So we're going to go get weighed in. And then... Uh, Apparently they weren't expecting me till Wednesday, but that's above my head. I'm not involved in that part of the scheduling, so I'm here, boys and girls, and they're gonna get me weighed in and loaded up, and we're gonna hit that long road, long road to uh, Virginia, Virginia. <laughs> about the flow of apples I mean I know they obviously aren't in season right now these are all coming out of cold storage um, they're juicing apples so they're ones that have blemishes they're maybe too small like uh, like this little guy he's tiny see little guy Just look at a little blemish any small here comes another load They put them in these apple crates. They weigh, they weigh about 850 pounds a piece. It's not in season. Usually these apple places that I've been to, um, it's usually ram and cram and there's trucks everywhere and just going, going. You, you remember the video a while back down in California at Martinelli's. It was like, there was trucks everywhere waiting to get unloaded. It was just go, go, go. And I'm assuming the rush must be through. Some of you guys that are more apple savvy out there that maybe produce apples or whatnot, uh, probably know what I'm talking about but uh, it's kind of nice it's a relaxing morning the guys are just uh, doing the deal kind of going after it here and just loading me nice and steady and everybody's in a good mood once I finally figured out where I was going I was in a good mood the lady in the office was really nice once I found it <laughs> so uh, we'll get these on I'm gonna I've decided to load legal this load and it, it pains me because the per ton rate is so high that if I could load Western Legal and go all the way to Virginia, it would literally pay over $2,000 more. It would literally pay over $2,000 more for the load, but I've got to go through like several states that are not heavy friendly states. And it's just a little too much. It's not like that Wisconsin deal where I was just nipping into Wisconsin. This is like over a thousand miles, 1200 miles of being way overweight. And it's time sensitive. Uh, I need to get it out there, get unloaded and get reloaded before the weekend. Otherwise I'm gonna be stuck back east for like three days, four days over the holidays. So anyway, that's a little, little synopsis of what's going on here. These also are a mix. You know, a lot of times you haul just one one type of apple, but that's another thing that makes me feel like maybe we're getting down to the slow part of the season for apples is because uh, possibly, it's, you know, I'm kind of guessing here, but this is a mixed load. I've got like four, I've seen four different names, uh, 
breeds of apples on this load. They're all just mixed as mixed, you know, organic apple juice. And so, uh, anyway, I'm assuming it's mixed because they're getting down to the dregs maybe where they have to kind of mix apples to make a load. But anyway, party on Wayne. grade with your foot to the floor maxing out every possible ounce of horsepower and potential from your semi no little word of advice on these long hard pulls especially going into summertime get in the right lane turn your flashers on for those cars that are not paying attention to slow moving trucks find yourself a nice gear that has your turbo boosting about half of its capacity it has your EGTs at a nice, easy level. Put your cruise control on and start watching your gauges. Look, I'm at 200 degrees, low nines, most than 22 pounds. You will never boil over if you do this. Oh, just finished up a little din din on the road. I'm at the old stage stop out here in Boise. You pronounce it Boise or Boise? I've learned that Idahoans are quite particular about how you pronounce their towns. They will get downright indignant if you uh, if you pronounce a name wrong in one of these Idaho places. Oh man, they come down on you. Real nice folk otherwise. They drive a little fast, but... Uh, <laughs> Oh, uh, anyway, it's good. The apples are riding good. I didn't stop one time from when I left Yakima till here, so, well, I did for my mandated 30-minute rest break, but other than that, we've just been rolling. So, figured I better get a little fuel in the mule. That's me. I'm the mule. And uh, we're going to kick it on out. I did, uh, I did get Army a birthday present. <laughs> it's hard to know. What do you get? A kid that's turning, oh, what is Army turning? He's turning seven, right? Yeah, pretty sure that's right. What do you get a kid that's turning seven? Yeah, he's turning seven because Bama's three. He's turning seven, and I was walking through the, uh, through the aisles there, and they had a bunch of puzzles. And uh, we lean more towards the uh, non-electronic side of things for the most part in our fam for our kids because the screens and all that are just turning all these kids into a bunch of crazies. Getting bad uh, bad habits, bad attitudes, bad attention problems and whatnot. It's like 90% 90, 90 from too much screens. So if you're having trouble connecting with your kids, <laughs> it's a little side note, or if your kids are having trouble paying attention and whatnot, you gotta bite the bullet and do the screen wean. We call it the screen wean. We weaned our kids. I didn't know this was gonna go down this little road, but here we are. We weaned our kids off of screen several years ago. And uh, it was like three weeks of horror as they detoxed. But now they're great. And when they actually get to use a screen or play a video game or whatever, play a phone here and there, it's like a huge treat to them. It's not like this entitled, I should have my screen and this is this. Like they really appreciate it. Like we did when we were growing up um it's like it's like a neat thing it's not just everyday commonplace to them anyway so i got army a puzzle army loves puzzles so <laughs> 550 pieces it's gonna be a stretch for him but uh anyway i'm gonna do a little walk around here and uh razzle dazzle i remember what i was gonna say i'll do it real quick before we go um, something that we've adapted to pretty well in our family, 
Um, and I would say I'm kind of just just coming off like the the hump of my outrageous truck driving career. I think last year was the peak of the pinnacle of just like ridiculousness. And now we're now we're dropping down. So that things will change as the future rolls on. But in those years where we were getting up to this crazy busyness and hitting that benchmark and then rolling off the backside of it, the family's done really well at adapting and understanding uh, things about holidays and birthdays. I've always made the major holidays. I don't think I haven't missed any Christmases, no Thanksgivings, but I've missed more birthdays and whatnot than I have made um, so far to date. And I'm not I'm not trying to say it's that's it's fine and you know you do what you got to do and your kids will be fine. I'm just saying that the family has done a really good job of adapting. It's important that you recognize something like a birthday. I think sometimes as providers, uh, we can have an issue with feeling like we've really failed someone by not being there on their birthday. So I'm, I'm let's use Army for an example. I'm gonna miss Army's birthday. Um, I'm gonna be on the road, I'm gonna miss it. And Army knows no question how I feel about him. Um, I have a great relationship there. And me being gone on that day is more of a, uh, uh, it's more of a hard thing for me than for him. But as adults, a lot of times we really feel like we're just really letting our kid down. Like think back to your birthdays as kids. Do you remember which of your you know, parents or siblings were there or weren't there? No, you don't. But so I'm not, I'm not saying like birthdays aren't important. You don't need to see them. You don't need to hit them. You do need to make it special which is why I bought a 550 piece puzzle. That's really stepping up the puzzle game for Army this year. I'm gonna show some faith in him by giving him that gift. But my point is that, um, I don't even know what my point is, you guys. It's not coming out, like it makes sense in my head, but it's not. It's just not coming out in a way that I can explain it that makes any sense. I'm proud that my family's done so well and been so resilient. I'm proud that they haven't put so much emphasis on things like birthdays that that I have not felt, oh, there, okay, here it is. It's all gonna come around. I'm thankful that my family has not put so much emphasis on something like a birthday that I've had to agonize as a provider over the years for missing so many of them. Um, a lot of times we'll celebrate, like they'll celebrate on the birthday, but then I'll get home and go, hey, let's go out and have a birthday dinner because I miss. So I wanna, I wanna have a birthday dinner and we wanna do something together. And we do that and I'm thankful I'm thankful for my family for that. That's what I'm trying to say. All that roundabout mumbo -ja blah blah blah, the, the jambalaya that I just spat out, it all just boils down to that. I'm thankful that my, that my family's resilient. Yeah. What you gotta watch out for in these truck stop parking lots? Man eater holes, man eaters. Oh, oh. Oh, no, there's one I didn't get my camera out quick enough, but it would have swallowed a small car whole. <laughs> Good thing we dodged it. Uh, so what we got going on now, night is falling. Just getting on the road. Put on just enough fuel to get me out of Idaho and into Wyoming. The fuel out here is just unbelievable. I was able to use, uh, let's see, make sure I get the right. I was able to use my mud flap and get diesel for, uh, for 550. But if I can, I just put enough on to get me across Wyoming. There's a 479 little, uh, little truck stop out there. I forget the name of it, but they just rebuilt it. And anyway, so I did my math. I should have put on enough gallons to get me to, uh, to that point, which would save a dollar a gallon basically over what they were uh, charging at the pump uh, retail here. So.
What a beautiful morning. Hey, I'm not actually that dirty today. Like, I'm not like, oh, I haven't showered in a week. But, <sighs> so I know that's what a few people are saying. Hey, uh, you should just shower instead of use baby powder. Well, I'm only a couple. What am I, day two, day three? I'm good in this air conditioned cab. Uh, all in this no touch freight. <laughs> it's not quite accurate, is it? No touch. Those of you that don't know in the trucking world, they advertise freight called no touch freight. It refers to, it refers to the big white, they call them van trailers, the big white boxes you see going down the road that the semis pull. And a lot of those you literally don't have to touch. You get out to open your doors and that's it. And you back in, they unload it, you go somewhere, same thing, they reload it. Hoppers aren't a whole lot different because you don't really have to touch it. You just kind of show up, you know, and they load it. But I feel like you're a little more involved. You know, you're out there telling them how much to load where, and you know, where you want the weight positioned within the trailer. <laughs> no touch freight. And if you're someone out there that hauls no, I'm not knocking no touch freight. I'm just, it's funny because it's a thing that it's like a huge selling point nowadays. Like, hey, we have 100% no touch freight. And you're like, well, that's great. Except for the touching your freight is about the only thing that gets you out to do anything, you know? As a trucking dog, as a trucking dog. Man, it was a good night last night. We made good time. Just, I put in a good solid day yesterday. Just really maximized my hours and, and just did good, so we're on track we're on track with where i want to be oh i tell you what though let me fire up the old rig here i will say the worst possible place you can ever sleep is next to the freeway. Oh, it's terrible. Like that shine? Of course, it's got a little water on it now, but I polished these babies up. It's all got a little haze on it now, but... Oh, it's so loud. Like, as soon as morning comes, wow, wow, truck's driving by. You can just tell standing out here. I gotta, like, yell at the camera. Wow. Everything's good. This tire here, it's already nice and warm from the sun. See stuff like that. That's not anything like bad necessarily. I mean, it's, it's not anything that's gonna get you in trouble with law enforcement. There's plenty of tread depth. That happens on spread axle tires a lot where they get twisted when you turn sharp. The tire gets twisted and it sometimes will pull pieces off. Um, not a huge fan of these Michelin Super Singles. Um, they seem to do that a lot worse than any of the other tires I've seen. So this one, I'll probably run it out for another round or so, and then uh, pony up the twelve, thirteen hundred dollars or whatever these things are costing now. Let's see, yeah, that's probably about what it is. Versus like this guy, this is a hand cook that just has a little different tread pattern seems to be doing a lot better with the scrubbing. For sure. For sure. Ugh. Whoa. <laughs> Looks like somebody lost a chunk. Oh. So, uh, interesting thing here. This tire here, last time I was home, I uh, took it in the shop because it was wearing, it was wearing more on this rib. Say you don't see lines on that rib, and you do see them here. Anyway, it was wearing, and I've noticed in this position on the trailer, this actual wheel end, this is the second time it started to do that. And so uh, I did a little investigating, crawled under, and discovered that the shock the old shock uh, had leaked the gas out, and I think I'm, I'm like 99% sure that's why. 
that this was uh, wearing tires out funny was because that shock had uh, had wore itself out. So while I was home, replaced the shock, put some new brakes in. Of course, greased her all up. Good to go for a wild boys and girls. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Wyoming. Wonderful Wyoming. Some of you guys asked about these inside tires that were cupping down. Uh, that's not going to get me in trouble again. And I don't feel any vibrations or hops or anything yet. Sometimes those will cause your tires to hop and you got to replace them. But just keeping an eye on that one. It's going to have to come off at some point, I'm sure. As it continues to wear. I think I'm going to start a campaign. I've talked about this or teased about this on my Instagram. I'm going to start a campaign called, if you're going to whiz in a bottle, throw it out the window, unscrew the lid. Like, whoever these jerks are that throw these whiz bottles out everywhere. You know, I had actually kind of a funny little irony. Let me share this real quick. The huge mega carriers, like the big trucking companies that have like thousands of trucks in their fleet, they're the ones that are pushing for those speed limiters. Ironically, I think this is obviously a generalization and some people that drive for the big companies aren't doing this. I wanna be clear, some of them are not doing this. But I bet if you could do some kind of magical study, you would find that nine out of 10 whiz bombs, I call them whiz bombs, the yellow whiz bombs are being thrown out. Probably nine out of 10 of them are from the giant company drivers. <laughs> I bet, I bet, and I'm saying I'm not all fired, I'm just saying. I bet if you did a study, it would be very interesting to see that. <laughs> like right there out my window, look at that. That's a trash bag somebody dumped out, and I'm not gonna go check it out. I don't know, you wanna do it? You can check this. If you're on a family road trip this summer, you can poke around and <laughs> see what you find, but uh, you see a plastic bag in a pullout, it's a good chance that there's poop in it. And I bet nine out of 10 of those poops are coming from mega carriers. <laughs> So how about this, Mega Carriers? This is a message for the big dogs. How about this? Why don't you get your drivers to quit pooping in bags and peeing in bottles? And then once you conquer that little hurdle, maybe we'll talk about having speed limiters. <laughs> oh, burn! You got a boom from the jacks. <laughs> Anyways, I had to get that out. That was funny. So if you're someone that whizzes in a bottle and you're gonna throw it out in litter, just as I'm being serious, that's fine. You're gonna litter either way. I, I can't stop you from littering, but please, just leave the lid off. You can throw the lid out the window separately and then throw the open bottle out. That way, the whiz will run out and it'll evaporate. And when the good Samaritans clean up after you, at least they won't have to pick up a nasty bottle full of whiz. It'll be long evaporated out. It won't be quite as gross. <laughs> yep. Penalty for littering. Why don't you just post a little camera up on top of that sign and I bet all your troubles will go away. Oh yeah, look over here too. Beautiful. Yeah. Real classy. I typically don't dog on other truckers. I kind of feel like we need to come together. <laughs> Silly as that sounds. Oh look at that big old gallon jug of whiz right there. See that? You see it? Sorry, I was zoomed in but Look at that one, that bag right there. I guarantee you see how it's squished on the road? It's a flipping old bag of the poos, man. It's gross. Oh man, you guys. <laughs> you get, so yesterday I got, uh, I got just enough diesel in Idaho where it was, whatever, five, 45 or whatever it came to after my discount and uh, that got me down the road to here which is in Wyoming on I-80 where diesel's 479 which is cheap but then I got on my mud flap and I see that out in uh, Ogallala Nebraska I see that in Ogallala Nebraska diesel is with the mudflap discount, 
can get it for 463. A bit of a pain to not be able to just, like you miss the days when you can just fill her up, and go. And now I'm like playing this game where, you know, Ogallala is another, I don't know, probably 280 miles from here. So I'm just gonna put in enough of this to get to Ogallala where then I'll stuff it to the gills. I'll fill up all my pop bottles and the soda cans and anything I can find that'll hold fluid. We'll fill it up <laughs> with that 463 because that's probably the cheapest diesel in the United States right now, would be my guess. So anyway, just another thing we gotta deal with that's seemingly unnecessary, but here we are, right? So here's a better look at this tire that I've been watching. See how this is wearing off, weirdly. It's really the only one that's, yeah, the real one that's really doing it. But this is where it's a pain because now you can see, if it was just this, it's okay. But you can see, look at this one starting to wear. See how it's just getting these little bits of wear. Right here, there's three and it's moving across. Pretty soon it's gonna wear across, and once that wears across there, that's where you'll start to get a vibration. Um, hopefully this will last me this last week and a half run on the road. Uh, you can't get a used tire of the same style and the same tread depth, so I'm gonna to have to get two tires put on here. Probably have to get change the whole axle out, really. So I don't think it's, well no, I think it's actually, it's okay. As long as I'm not using my lockers. I'll get two tires and put here, which will be over a thousand bucks. And then I'll, this one of course will get junked. And I'll keep this one as a spare in case any one of the rest of these other uh, two, four, six that are left start to go bad. Then I'll have one good spare. So this is always the part that's a pain. We have to start mixing and matching your tires. But again, part of the deal. my last fuel stop for today <laughs> 463 with that mud flap discount I will be honest with you I never thought in my lifetime that I would feel a rushing sigh of relief to find fuel for four dollars and 63 cents a gallon considering that prior to this moment in time the most I ever have paid in my life for diesel before this little mania moment Hopefully, it better just be a moment and not a new trend. But uh, I just ran a red light. I paid 416 for diesel back when I first started trucking back in, uh, oh, whenever that last time diesel got high, like in, anyway, you remember what it was. Like, I don't want to shoot a date out because I can't remember exactly. But anyway, 463 really felt like I uh, found a bargain there. <laughs> I think I can shoot across. That'll get me across Nebraska, get me over into Eastern Iowa. And I think clear down into uh, Illinois. I believe I found a mud flap over there for 488. I'll hit that one. I'll shoot across uh, through Columbus and keep going east. And uh, there's one last little fuel stop there in Ohio that has a mud flap discount. Mud flap's that app, remember? For those of you that may have forgotten. It's that app that gives you a fuel discount, and I don't know what it is, but whatever. That's the last opportunity to buy a reasonably priced diesel, because then you're into Pennsylvania and Virginia, and uh, you're just out of luck at that point. So we're here. We're locked in. I know that this is getting to be kind of like a long trip, <laughs> and all I can say is if you think it's a long trip from your viewing position. <laughs> Just imagine being in my viewing position. Like normally it's like, you know, one day, day and a half, you get there, we film some more stuff, unloading. What do we reload? And we film some reload. This one's like, okay, we loaded and we're rolling. And we're still rolling. And we're still rolling. 
that's how I feel. I'm like, well, what else do I film? What else should I show? Because it's, <laughs> it's just, you know the deal. So anyway, if you're sitting there thinking, man, this, this video is getting kind of long, this trip. It feels that way because it was, it is. I'm in the midst of it, and it is. <laughs> so, <coughs> maybe I'll find some snarly traffic or something to, to film for you. <laughs> I gotta tell you guys this. I've got to tell you. <laughs> this is why I know, look, I, I know I understand. By the way, this is I-80 eastbound in Nebraska. Getting to be evening time, traffic on this end of the state usually is a little bit thinner. I'm about 43 miles, looks like. 43 miles west of North Platte, Nebraska. You guys, I just figured up my fuel mileage from when I left. I fueled up in Western Montana, Missoula, Montana. Went over to Yakima, loaded, loaded apples there. Drove apples from Yakima down through Oregon, across Oregon, up and over cabbage, all the Oregon rollers. Ran across Idaho.